Okay, let's model an internal ANSI thread. For this example, I'm going to use a quarter 20 UNC-2B thread. You can use the same technique for any ANSI internal thread. For different threads, just adjust the values based on the thread specification. When threads are given in limit form, meaning max and min, we're going to use max plus min divided by 2 for the model value. What values are we going to use? The minor diameter, the thread depth, the crest flat, the pitch, and a 60 degree angle because it's a unified thread. I use this website, which I find very helpful. In this website, you simply pick the thread you want, quarter 20 UNC in this example. All right, let me find it, quarter 20. Okay, make sure it's 2B, and then hit compute. If we look at the diagram, this is the minor diameter. Okay, we see this little shape we'll need to cut away. That's called the thread depth. We need this flat on right here, which is called the uh, crest flat. Let's get started. So here's on shape. We'll make a part document and we'll call it one quarter 20 UNC dash 2B. Say OK. When I model, I personally like to have all my setting units to full accuracy while I'm modeling. I like to see this full accuracy. That's my preference. Okay, good enough. That's what I need. Okay, so we'll start by making the part that we're going to cut into. It just needs to be a block. That's not very important, but I'll go ahead and make a sketch here. To represent the block, I'll make a block right there. And about one inch high. That should be big enough right there. Put dimensional constraint on it. Probably oversized, whatever. Plenty big. I don't know what that was all about. There we go. Good enough. And there's our block. Let's extrude it. And I'll just make it one and a quarter. Good enough. Okay, so now in order to make a hole, we need a sketch with a point to locate the hole. The hole is going to be at the uh, minor diameter. So let's make the sketch first on this face. could be any face on the part you want, or it could be on a plane if the part is curved. Um, I'll make a sketch here. I'm just going to place a point. You might have to dimensionally constrain your points. I'm putting mine right on the origin just for convenience. Okay, done. We're done with that sketch. Now we can go ahead and make a hole. The hole is going to be simple. It's going to be through. The size is going to be the minor diameter of this thread. I'm going to copy this. I copy the values. I don't even have to write them down or remember them. I come here, and on the diameter here, I paste them in. Parenthesis left and plus max plus min and divided by close parenthesis divided by two. That's the formula I use for converting over to the model value. And just pick the hole, and there it is. There it is. Now we have the minor diameter hole going through the part. Okay, now we need a sketch right through the center of that hole. Well, I know that my right plane is, so I'm going to pick the right plane. You might have to create uh, reference geometry to get the plane you need on a real part. I will change this to translucent so you can see the internal features, which is the hole. Now we're going to sketch out the profile of the tool, which will cut away the threads. Okay, and I'm just going to do that. I'm going to get up close and personal here. And good enough there. Okay. And there. Get up. Right in there we go. We know these sides are going to be equal. So let's do a dimensional constraint. Uh, I'm sorry, a um, geometric constraint of equal. There they are. But I just did them. Let's try that again. There they are. And let's put our dimensions on here. We already know this is a unified thread, so it is 60 degrees. 
that we know easy we know the um the flat let's look up the flat right there the flat that is the crest flat let's look at the diagram so you could see it the crest flat is crest radius crest flat right there that's our crest flat what is the crest flat the crest flat is right here max plus min divided by two it's in limit form on this thing it's got limits so we're going to add them together divided by two so let's put a dimension here right there paste the number in there we go there we go add them together divide them by two there you go and it jumps down that's typically what it'll do okay fine let's get the height I actually they call it that they actually call that the um, thread depth it's actually the thread depth so let's get the depth from there to there the thread depth the thread depth is right here control C right click copy go here and paste it in control V home left parenthesis plus end and right parenthesis there divided by two there we go that's a little bigger than I thought okay um we need the pitch the pitch is from the pitch okay let me show you the pitch where's the pitch the pitch is from one side all the way to the other okay so let's get that pitch in there and do we know the pitch I think we do because this is 20 threads per inch Pitch is 1 divided by the threads per inch. So 1 divided by 20. There you go. 0.05. Took a second for it to jump there. We also need the minor diameter. So let's go find that minor diameter. We've looked it up before. Let's look it up again. And that's this minor diameter right here. This minor diameter. Okay. That's the minor diameter. Control C. Copy. Let's go back into here and dimension this guy and paste home that left parenthesis plus and right parenthesis divided by four because we're working from a radius we're working on from a radius not from a diameter here so divided by four boom there you go you can see that the bottom of this correlates perfectly with that and it should there we go that's a perfect thread form let's uh, finish the sketch now we need to cut away our thread. So first thing we're going to do is make a helix representing the pitch. So where is helix? That I have to find. Sorry about this. I uh, There we go, helix. And it's going to be clockwise, yes, because it's not a left-handed thread. The revolutions, no, we want from turns. We're going to drop it down and say pitch. There's our pitch. Okay. Um, and we're going to say the pitch is 1 divided by 20. Okay. Pick the inside of the cylinder, and there it is. One adjustment I want to make is this helix is ending at zero degrees, which is right. You can see it very closely right here. I want that helix to terminate where my sketch is, which is at 90 degrees. So I'm going to change this start angle to 90. I've had it where it doesn't matter, and I've also seen where it seems to give me an issue. So I prefer to play it safe with the modeling and change it to the identical location that my sketch is at. Okay, that's perfect. Now uh, let's go ahead and cut the thread. Uh, away we go. So we're going to do a sweep. And for the face region, we pick the internal sketch face. If I can find it, it's not finding it. Let me find it again. Okay, let me do this again. Right there. Now we got it. Yep. And, of course, for the sweep path is going to be the helix. We're going to say remove. I like to say merge all just to play it safe and give it some time. There it is. You just made a perfect internal thread. Perfect internal thread. Congratulations. All right. That's it, guys. And thank you very much.